what has 50,000 square feet, 4,000 pieces, and 500 artists? Art Hampton 2011, of course. The International Art Fair is back in the Hamptons, helmed by Rick Friedman and a cast of thousands. This is the place to be this weekend if you're looking for some really phenomenal pieces. <laughs> Welcome to Art Hampton. Enjoy the show here on a hot summer's night in Bridge Hampton. Hi, I'm here with Rick Friedman, the director of Art Hamptons, among many other wonderful fairs. Tell me, who is your favorite artist and why? Well, and you can play that's, favorites. That's a tough question, but I would say my favorite artist is actually Willem de Kooning. Bill de Kooning. I have a Bill de Kooning room in my house. Okay, I'll tell you that I'm a huge fan of Jimmy Ernst, um, Abstract Expressionism. I love his work. I think it it moves me. The first time I saw it, I was really blown away. So um, put that on the top of my list. Raoul Dufy and uh, Corot, Paul Corot. Who is your favorite artist of any era and why? Well, I'll tell you what. Oh, well, I'll tell you what I'm in love with at the moment is the Peter Dayton exhibit with the um, the uh, surfboards. I love that. It's up at the front of the exhibit. So here at Art Hamptons, art comes in all shapes and sizes, large and small, in every medium you could possibly imagine. Photos, glasswork, metalwork, sculptures, wood, they absolutely have everything. For the collector, new or old. And the price tag? Well, let's just say it ranges. And I happen to see quite a few red dots already, which if you're in the know in the art world, you know that means four very important letters. S-O-L-D sold. Sometimes art is big, sometimes it's small, sometimes it's about the star in the center, like John or Elizabeth Taylor. Sometimes it's about the medium that an artist uses. In this case, the artist took something very small, a teeny tiny picture of Richard Burton, and paired it to make Liz Taylor. Fabulous people and, a, you know, a pleasant experience overall and a lot of good art to buy. Now what are you looking for? Are you looking for something specific or you're just sort of looking? Contemporary. I like contemporary. Uh, something to fill, uh, fill up our walls, which is hard to do. So. Now when you're choosing something, do you pick by color? Do you go by the artist? What, do you, what draws you in? I go by color and the theme. There's, there's a lot of beach themes here, which I like, because you know we're in Southampton, and that's what I like. I like the Impressionists, and I especially like Bonard because the colors are so beautiful. But tonight I'm wearing Miro, so what can I say? Jean-Michel Bisquois, because I taught him in high school. Ah, OK. Oh, yeah. It's an in story. I'm waiting for the art to speak to me. It's like actually my favorite color. If I had to narrow it down to Wando, uh, I would say Jerry Ulsman, because of his, uh, his work with surrealism and his work with uh, combining different image, images together and his uh, uh, commitment to authenticity. You know, I like how he does uh, all his work in a dark room. Well, I like Caroline Schneeman. I'm a, I'm a feminist movement. Hannah Wilkie, Caroline Schneeman, Jackson Pollock. I love abstract expressionists. But what I'm really excited about tonight is Ultraviolet and Taylor Mead being here. They are the superstars of Andy Warhol, of course, as you well know. That, to me, tonight is the most exciting thing, is to have meet them, finally. Still nothing. We'll keep going. We buried all our friends and we stayed alive. We eat the flesh of our dead friends. Now, I understand, I saw a, a piece of that you created that will go down to the 9-11 memorial. Can you tell me about that a little? Well, I worked a lot on 9-11 because I think it's an important date, it's an important event. And as an artist, I think you have to take important subject. I would not do a portrait of my cat. I think it has no meaning today. And I did a lot of work. And this is a palindrome, you know, if you, it's 9-11 and it's 9-11. And um, yeah, I, but I have many other work. Also there I have some Michelangelo, did you see those? Just around the corner, you know, to have a different take on art. Because I think that Mickey Mouse is a great new archetype, but I created another archetype, adding wings, and then it becomes Michelangelo. 
So as an artist, you have to invent. You cannot copy anybody. Now, when all these photos were taking place and all of that in the, in the factory was happening, what are some of your fondest memories of all of that? Well, uh, we worked with a genius named Andy Warhol, who was also very cheap, but we loved him anyway. What I like, we used to shoot a movie, one movie every day, and then the next day we would put a sheet between two columns and watch our rushers. <clears throat> and that was great because I, I had never done a film before. I don't know about Taylor. Yes, we love we love to be. Well, the movies we did with John Chamberlain and Andy Warhol, they were immediate. You they you shot and you showed. You didn't edit. When you see the photo on the other side of your movie and and especially your your posterior there, what what does that make you think? About our movies. Taylor Mead's ass. Your ass is on the other side of this wall in stunning black and white, and it's quite phenomenal. How do you feel about it now? It uh, reminds me of George O'Keefe. Andy wanted me to hold still, but I, couldn't, I can't hold still for anything. So I was shoving Bibles up my ass. And, Bible up your ass? Well, whatever. And Andy said, oh, Taylor, can't you hold Did still? He have a Bible there? Bibles, uh, vacuum cleaners. I had to make a, I had to, uh, I had to give it a plot, but Andy didn't like plots, so. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you. And here we are, Hamptons.com, Art Hamptons, with Ultraviolet and Taylor Mead, two absolute icons in the art world. Amid millions of dollars of art and inspiration, I'm Nicole Brewer with Hamptons.com. Thanks for joining me here at Art Hampton 2011. Still nothing. <laughs>